Have you ever wondered why butterflies developed such vivid and varied colors despite making it more difficult to escape from predators? This video on natural selection explores some of the complexity of this rather seemingly simple idea. In this video, we'll start with an overview of natural selection and its relationship to evolution. We'll take a look at the conditions necessary for natural selection to occur, including genetic variation in a population and competition, which includes intraspecific competition, as well as density dependent and independent selection pressures. We'll take a look at fitness and selection, including sexual selection. Finally, we'll see how John Endler's experiments explored the relationship between sexual selection and survival in guppies. Natural selection is the mechanism of evolution. At first glance, natural selection seems like quite a simple concept, but we'll see that when it plays out in the natural world, it has layers of complexity that this video merely touches on. Natural selection can sometimes be confused with evolution. However, we can see that there are different processes here and it's useful to compare them. Natural selection acts on individuals, where some organisms survive and reproduce more successfully than others. We can see in this image that natural selection occurs in the lifetime of the individual, as some fishes are eaten due to their visibility to predators and some survive. Those that survive and reproduce pass their genes into the next generation, and some individuals reproduce at higher rates than others. So natural selection determines if and how often an individual passes genes into the next generation, and it occurs over the lifetime of an individual. Natural selection is the process by which certain traits become more common in a population because they increase an individual's chances of survival and reproduction, thereby influencing the frequency of genes passed into the next generation. Evolution, on the other hand, occurs at the population level. It's a slow accumulation of changes in the gene pool of the population, and it occurs over many generations as a result of natural selection. Here we would see it as a change in the color of the fish population over many generations. In order for natural selection to occur, there must be several conditions present in the population. First, natural selection requires genetic variation among the individuals in the population. If they were genetically identical, none would have an advantage over any other. Although we commonly think of this as variation in physical traits, variation can also be in behavior like mating calls or flight or fight responses to predators. For natural selection to work on variation, the variation must be genetically controlled so it passes to the next generation. If variation is not genetically encoded, then genes coding for a characteristic will not pass to the next generation and not influence the evolution of the population. The genetic variation of populations is produced by two things, mutations that introduce new alleles and unique combinations of alleles that occur through sexual reproduction. Changes in alleles or unique combinations of existing alleles can lead to new phenotypes or characteristics. In sexually reproducing species, the recombination of alleles is a powerful source of variation in the population. The recombination of alleles occurs in three different processes, crossing over and independent assortment occurring during meiosis, as well as random fertilization. Check out our other key concept videos to see these processes in more depth. The second requirement for natural selection to occur is competition. Typically species produce more offspring than the environment can support. Competition increases and selection pressures become stronger as populations reach or exceed their carrying capacity. Because members of the same populations occupy the same niche, they may be competing for the same resources or escaping from the same predators. This competition within species members is called intraspecific competition. This is a concept that can be misunderstood and I like to clarify it with a joke. Two people are sitting at a campfire when a bear starts to approach. The first person gets up to start running while the second stops to put on running shoes. The first person says, are you crazy? You can't outrun a bear. And the second person says, I don't have to outrun a bear. I just have to outrun you. In this case, the two humans are competing against each other to not be eaten by a bear. And this is intraspecific competition. The bear is not a competitor. The bear is the selection pressure. 
Although some species do compete against each other, leading to some fascinating examples of co-evolution, the strongest selection pressure is most often intraspecific competition rather than interspecific competition. With intraspecific competition, typically the denser the population becomes, the stronger the selection pressures as members of the populations compete for increasingly dwindling resources. The selection pressures that gain in intensity when population growth increases are called density-dependent. Examples of density-dependent selection pressures include predators, as larger populations will attract predator species, food sources, the spread of disease, and waste accumulation. Sometimes selection pressures are not density-dependent, and those typically tend to be environmental. For instance, if there's a change in temperature, pH, habitat destruction, or other factors. This can be a selection pressure as some individuals may not tolerate the changes. Usually, many different selection pressures are acting on a population, and their adaptations may have opposite selection pressures. We'll explore this further in the video when we discuss sexual selection, but differing selection pressures are not limited to that example. Those that survive the selection pressures and live to reproduce are deemed fit for their environment and are selected by the environment to reproduce. A misconception of evolution is that survival of the fittest drives species towards perfection or maximal adaptation. In reality, if the selection pressures are weak, even those that may have maladaptive characteristics can survive and reproduce. It is only under strong or shifting selection pressures that populations are driven toward adaptation and evolution. Those that pass their genes with the highest frequency into the next generation through reproduction are the most fit in terms of natural selection, as they have the most influence on the gene pool in the next and future generations. Sometimes this comes at the cost of their survival, but if they die after having passed genes on successfully, they are still considered fit. To help remember the conditions necessary for natural selection to occur, you can use the mnemonic GOFA. Gophers have many adaptations to survive, such as teeth, as their incisors are adapted for gnawing through roots and soil, and he can help you remember how he got them. G stands for the genetic variety necessary in the population that gives some members an advantage to reproductive success. For example, with guppies having certain markings, give an advantage to avoid predation or attract a mate. O stands for overproduction, which leads to competition for resources and increases intraspecific selection pressures. F stands for fitness. Those that survive to reproduce are most often the most fit and A for adaptation, which is the population shifting to adapt to its environment as it evolves as a result of natural selection. Finally, H stands for heredity, to demonstrate that the characteristic or trait must be passed to the next generation. Sexual selection is a form of natural selection where individuals with certain traits are more likely to obtain mates and reproduce. These traits may not necessarily improve survival, but can enhance an individual's chance of reproducing. For example, in species like the lion, where females are limited in the number of offspring they can produce in a season, and males are not, females will tend to be selective about the males they choose for mating, as the male genes affect the fitness of their limited offspring. This can lead to sexual dimorphism, where males and females of the same species have different physical or behavioral traits. Male lions, for instance, grow a mane that is meant to increase their chances of being selected to mate by a female. However, growing the mane takes extra metabolic energy and nutrients, so the mane must be big enough to attract a female mate, while not so big that it puts the male lion in danger of dying before he reproduces. In many species where males compete for sexual selection, males have traits that females do not to boost their reproductive success. Where males battle each other, males of the species may be larger or have horns or antlers. Where females choose mates, males may have fitness displays like peacock feathers. Males often have colorful displays to attract females for mating, but that may also make them more visible to predators. The balance between these two types of selection pressures can be complex. 
Sometimes traits that are advantageous for mating may be disadvantageous for survival or vice versa. Over time, natural selection can help balance these opposing pressures, leading to traits that optimize both survival and reproductive success. This dynamic between survival and reproduction is seen in Endler's guppy experiments. To explore this dynamic further, Endler conducted two experiments concurrently with guppies found in the natural streams and pools in Trinidad. Male guppies can be brightly colored with many spots of color, while females are relatively plain. His studies were conducted in either the laboratory or greenhouse with carefully controlled pools, while the other studies were conducted in the field where he moved males with different colorations into different areas of the stream that had different selection pressures for survival. Looking at some of the data from the experiments, the bars in green indicate the number of spots from the guppy experiments conducted in the greenhouse. The bars in blue indicate studies conducted in the wild. We can see Endler had three different treatments for predation strength as his independent variable while his control being in the greenhouse where guppies did not have predators. Predator selection was increased by having pools in the greenhouse and in the wild where guppies had weak predators, the fish species are hearty, known as killifish. Finally, Endler set up trials with a strong predator selection, where guppies experienced strong predation from the species C. alta, commonly known as the pike cichlid. Pause the video and see if you can identify any conclusions that can be drawn from the data. We can see from the graph that in the greenhouse where there was no predation, sexual selection favored many spots in males, suggesting that females favored males with a colorful display, and those that had many spots reproduced more often. In areas with weak predation, there appears to be no difference in the laboratory setting in the number of spots in males, suggesting that sexual selection for spots is still stronger than the predator selection against spots. However, in the field, the number of spots decreases. This could indicate that other predators or other factors are selecting against males with spots in the field that are not found in the lab. Under strong predation, the predator selection pressure is stronger than the sexual selection pressure for both groups. Males with fewer spots are more likely to survive and reproduce. In this case, males with more colorful spots do not make it to reproductive age as they are hunted by predators, while those evading predators survive and reproduce. Endler studied many different variables in his experiments, including the color of spots, area of spots, as well as population numbers, and supported the idea that sexual selection strength and survival selection strength can shift the phenotypes of males in the population. In this video, we saw that natural selection occurs on the individual level and is the mechanism of evolution of populations over many generations. In order for natural selection to occur, there must be genetic variation in the population as well as competition. Fitness refers to individuals that are selected to reproduce, while those that reproduce most frequently are the most fit. Sexual selection is a selection pressure caused by mate selection and can have different selection pressures than survival. Endler demonstrated that differences in selection strength between sexual selection and predator selection can shift the phenotypes of males in populations.